Hello. Welcome to Mixed Media. We are a weekly podcast every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Time, if you're on the West Coast like I am. And we are a, you know, podcast where three of us basically just talk about art in general, you know, both in our um, our individual fields and also just kind of art more broadly, art in society and things like that. So welcome if you are listening live, if you are listening to us in post also, hello. And I know we're having a whole bunch of technical problems right now, so... Irving, have you managed to uh, figure out your microphone? No. Okay. <laughs> so, I assume that Irving and his guest will be going first. I'm assuming that's the plan. So, I guess we're going to s- let me know when you're ready to go. And otherwise, I guess I'll stall for time. Well, how, 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 how's your weekend been? Or not your weekend, your week. <laughs> uh, my week has been... I don't know, it's been really busy with a whole bunch of different different things, but also, you know, I've been trying to, you know, make some time to, to watch and listen to some different things. I um, I got the Omni Music, which I know I've talked about in previous shows. Um, I mean, one of the, you know, main publishers of um, film, film scores. Uh, they, unfortunately, last year, they, they were only allowed to, print a certain number of scores for um, James Horner's music for Willow uh, when they no longer can print it and sell it. Um, but I, I acquired it via in my school's interlibrary alone. So I got the score, listened, listened to it, watched the film. That was interesting. It's that's a really interesting and, and funny score. Deserves, deserves some mention at some point when I have some more time to reflect on it. But yeah, so that's that's what I've been doing. Gotcha. All right, it looks like we have everything fixed, uh, well, at least visually speaking. I noticed that the uh, blur effect in the background sort of blurs my hair, so it looks like I have very little hair. But uh, that's besides <laughs> the point. <laughs> there, is your uh, mic fixed there? Yes, everything is in order. I actually have no idea how you guys were hearing me at all because my mic was off. And also, I was muted on my phone. So there was some magical device. Do I sound different now than I did before? Uh, I don't think so. I, okay, th- I have no idea what happened there. <laughs> uh, pretty crazy. But yeah, uh, I'm Irving Nestor. I'm a media entrepreneur. Uh, I own a company called Ariella, uh, and I'm excited to uh, talk to our guest today. Uh, I'm Nathan. I'm a game developer and a 3D modeler. My name is uh, Robert Sharma, and I'm the CEO of a production company called RNS Films, and uh, also a film student, filmmaker, uh, future scriptwriter, and uh, director. If you don't know, you can watch any of our other shows because I'm talking about film music. I'm, I'm my name is Ben Costello. I am a flute player and a media composer. Yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll just do the little intro spiel, spiel real quick. We are mixed media. Um, I think Ben said a lot of stuff of, stuff about who we are exactly at the beginning of the show. Uh, but a few things to keep in mind that I keep bothering everyone about uh, on the show is uh, we want to be on Rumble Live. So that costs us money. So in order for us to do that, in order for us to uh, meet that goal and to yeah, expand the show's audience um, in order to yeah uh, extend some perks that we've been thinking about, maybe even do like a virtual film festival, a whole bunch of ideas in the bag. But what we really need is uh, support. So if you go to uh, mixedmedia.locals.com, mixedmedia.locals.com, you'll find uh, that you can support us for $5 a month. If we just get a few people, we'll, we'll be off, off the ground for sure. And I, I love seeing the growth. Um, it's slow and steady wins the race kind of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, what, what really helps the most is if we can get some support right now, we're kind of at that point. And any link that you need is in the description, uh, whether it's our Discord group, whether it's our Instagram, wherever you want to find us, we have links in the description where you can follow us. Uh, Discord's pretty awesome because we get to continue the conversations uh, after the show. So, uh, yeah. I would love to support us all. That would be great. Rob, Rob, Rob. <laughs> First of all, how are you doing today? 
how's every how's everything oh man uh it's been a pretty wild uh month and a half and a wild week a lot of busy busy things going on with work and then with the future projects that we're working on i'm excited um i was excited last week to um possibly do this but then i you know had to go to work and it just so happens that you know when time happens it always happens at the perfect timing right you know mm -hmm. so it wasn't meant to be last week it's meant to happen today so that's the way i look at it i'm very optimistic about that and i believe in positivity and manifesting you know that into the universe i know you for i've known you for a while now yeah for for a good time now. <laughs> i've been talking to you for a good time now but for uh those out there who don't know who you are yeah give us a rundown like where are you from um and i guess really the question is how did you get to the point where you started doing film stuff which i know is a really long story but uh feel free to feel free to go on <laughs> um well uh yeah it has been a long time uh, venturing into film um of course i've done other things you know and kind of like how sometimes actors and people that are in film worked all kinds of side odd jobs and stuff in their life you know that you never even thought that they would have done you know what what happened actually 2000 and uh so when i had left work uh, a couple of years ago because i got diagnosed with that ptsd uh because i served and it slowly crept up on me over the years i didn't even know i had it i had anxiety but uh didn't really know that i heard of ptsd but i never thought i had it so when it finally hit me i had left work for a while i'm still in the same company uh with homeland security i've done that forever i've when i first came out from the service i uh worked a lot in um Border Patrol, but that was before mm. it became Homeland Security. This was like before 9-11, right? So um, when I had left work, it kind of gave me an option to venture out, you know, and do a lot of thinking. And uh, I was going through therapy and it just accidentally just came back to me, you know, how the world happens, you know, something that I wasn't thinking at the time and I thought about years ago just happened to land in my mind at the right time, at the right place. That was when I uh, was sitting at my sister's uh, porch in Venice Beach, and I had the idea of looking up uh, Jim Morrison and you know trying to figure out where he might have resided in uh, uh, in uh, uh, Venice Beach, because I know you know he has a, he had a pretty big uh, uh, life in in um, as an artist and uh, as a celebrity there, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I sat there and I just, you know, on my phone, I looked up, uh, you know, Jim Morrison and Venice Beach. So I happened to bump into this uh, whole YouTube thing that they had called Room 32. Mm. And it's like, whoa, what's that? And so a lot of throughout the years, a lot of people have gone there to that room in Westwood, in West Hollywood. And uh, they did like little youtube videos nothing big nobody done anything like i did you know that i put together so when i realized that the story just kind of crept into my mind so then the the name of the film actually came later and uh it just i just started writing a bunch of notes and like how most people you hear how most people write film you know you talk to some filmmakers and they'll tell you that they wrote a bunch of notes everywhere like scrambled around and like just and it just took some time to finally put together like a puzzle and when we happened to have it it was just we knew <laughs> that's when i met uh, uh irving at the right time and i say timing is there is, is 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 one of those things where you have to have it it has to be uh universal it either happens or doesn't happen and uh we were very lucky to bump into each other in this life and um it's a pleasure to be here and pleasure to know irving and now his brother and uh you know and his, and his friend and and it's you know we're, we're gonna grow together and i have a very strong um vision of where we're gonna take this so, so um when I, when I wrote door 32 
And like I said, the name came afterwards. And I just started thinking about Jim Morrison, but I didn't want to write a film using him as, you know, his name and then Pam Morrison because I'm a new guy. And I was like, the last thing I want to do is barely stepping into the industry and then boom, I'm getting sued, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, by the estate of Jim Morrison, right? I mean, what a way to come into the film industry. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, what an introduction, right? <laughs> I'm on the news. <laughs> so um you can make a name for yourself that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Wannabe, but... Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh you know, and then like when I started writing the film and I started getting more deeper into the vision of how I wanted a, um, the film to be. I mean, of course, it's a, a non-fictional, so we're not using any of the names. Um, I came up with my own names of, of the character. And what's really funny, when me and uh, Irving were talking after uh, he had read it the first time and told me to have it reformatted. So the minute I got it reformatted and gave it to him, he was like. He just took a second to read it and says, that's it. That's all I can understand it now. And I was like, wow, like I didn't even understand like how he did that. Like because I'm new, you know, so I, was, I didn't understand the reformatting process or what it was, you know. And yeah. so he taught me a lot. I mean, you know, of course, I'm a film student, but uh, and that actually when I started uh, writing Door 32, it got me, put me in the right position to uh, um, venture into film. So that actual, that script got me to get the guts to, you know, follow through. And I never thought of RNS films, you know, I just I had other businesses on the side, t-shirt business that I had for years and a coffee business that Irving knows about that I had. And, uh, and it just, it just, next thing you know, I just came up with uh, RNS films. And like I said, it's one of those things I've always been good at is coming up with names. Mm. Like every single business name I've always had, like, for instance, California style brand, you know, before that, I had that uh, T-shirt label Lucky Charms, you know, which is the, that email address that I have, you know, my last name without the uh, A at the end adding an S. It became Lucky Charms, almost sounds like the cereal, you know, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, that pushed me into what I branded the uh, reformatted everything for that business and thought of a new business name. I came out with California style brand and it just. I realized that everything that I kind of sort of, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to say that, you know, oh, you know, like everything I touch turns gold, right? <laughs> no, that's not solid gold, you know? Yeah. There's only one person that can do that, you know, Snoop Dogg, right? Everything you touch is turns <laughs> <to> gold, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, uh, and I mean that now, but, um, yeah, I know, I mean, that, it's just, that's it's why amazing. He... It's, ama it's an amazing thing. I mean, and it's an amazing thing. When you have that gift and when you realize you have a gift. Yeah. No, I just want to ask you, though, like uh, to take it back a little bit. Um, what is like, yeah, I know you started writing Door, Door 32, which is the film that we're working. Well, one of the projects that we're working on together. But what uh, made you interested in, you know, putting pen to paper and actually doing screenwriting and film in, in the first place? Like what was the, you know, have you always been into film viewed yourself as a filmmaker at all or like how'd that work out you know yeah uh i've always been very big on old film not really always uh with uh, silent films but i've always had a love for black and white film mm. and i knew that when i was a kid growing up everything that i saw just kind of seemed to come out in black and white in mm. my mind and I thought of my life, I just told my dad this uh, recently. I said, I, my dad asked me the same question. I said, dad, you know, I always looked at my life personally as a, as a story, as a, as a movie. Mm. And I kind of played this character and, you know, kind of made up characters. And, you know, and I remember I was in high school and I uh, took a uh, uh, drama and I realized, oh man, you know, I really don't think I want to be like an actor. You know, I knew that pretty early uh even though later on throughout the years like now i'm pretty confident as far as you know talking and 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 being in front of cameras and stuff but but back then i was yeah very young and i first time i went on stage man i was <laughs> i was this little skinny scrawny kid which uh, uh i have the vhs i want to oh, put wow. that on i want to put that on dvd so you guys can take a look at it someday 
<laughs> and um, yeah, so that that was really cool to look back at. I did kind of, as a kid, try to venture out and try to get into film. And, uh, you know, it was just really tough because, you know, building a portfolio back in those days, people were kind of really, uh, they knew people wanted to get into film. And what they would do is they would make you spend so much money building a portfolio book you know, taking pictures and all that stuff. And in the end, you realize that it wasn't about you. They just yeah. wanted to make money off of you, you know, and they didn't yeah. care if you could get a job or anything like that, you know. And then like, so as far as films, I've always been a big James Dean guy, uh, Marilyn Monroe, mm. uh, Natalie Woods, um, all the old guys, you know. Yeah. And um, when I when I was a little bit in my 20s, early 20s at one point i um had the it was an accidental thing like how things happen on accident but i went and i found out where marilyn monroe was buried you know mm. and i went to her mausoleum and uh it was really crazy because i ended up meeting and it was really weird how it happened i bought a book i bought a book it was a true story about this book and it was about marilyn monroe that her sisters wrote this book and so in the back there was an address and i literally just wrote to this address and how things happen in life i got a the the universe it just brought it to me i got a letter back and i got invited to uh this fan club annual birthday event that they had for her <laughs> yeah in in westwood and so i went out there with a friend of mine i took her with me from work we went to this thing and I have a whole bunch of pictures, brother. Oh my God. Like pictures of her actual dresses and pants and all kinds of real, like I was sitting on her, on her couch that, that they had there. So I, I got to share that with you guys later on, but uh, it was really cool to be there. I've never been to her actual house. That That's not going to happen because the person who owns it is very private now. But uh, it's a beautiful house. It's that Spanish uh, uh, kind of like a, uh, what is it called? Uh, it's like that Spanish, what is it called? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, like that. Really nice house. I was there at this birthday thing that they were having for her. They actually cut a cake and all that stuff. It was really pretty uh, interesting. <laughs> and then, oh. I ended up uh, uh, getting an autograph of this lady that was there who knew Marilyn Monroe and she was her uh, first hairstylist. Mm -hmm. And so I happened to get her autograph. I mean, I didn't really know who she was then, you know, but uh, again, you know, I'm 46 now. So this was when I was about 24, quite some time. Um, time flies really fast. <laughs> um, but so anyway, so we go over there and I've never been there. I've seen pictures of it and how kooky this thing is, right? How spooky things happen, right? So we get there and first of all, when Marilyn Monroe was first buried there, encrypted there, the building that's there in front of it wasn't there before. There's a state building right in front of it, a huge building. So it's in Westwood. So when you're driving, you, you know, I didn't use my navigation at the time. We didn't have navigation then, right? <laughs> my navigation was all here, you know, or like, so we pull up and then I pull up and I ask the security guard, I go, sir, I go, I'm here to, uh, um, that, that Westwood Cemetery. He goes, oh yeah, yeah. He goes, you just go to your left. It's right behind the building. So he let us in. We went and sure enough, you pull in and it's a whole cemetery. It's a small cemetery right behind this building. It's amazing. Really beautiful uh, uh, cemetery. Uh, I mean, I've never, you know, I'll get into the ghost stories later on, you know, as far as that experience when I was younger, but um, which is another, it's another story. So we pull up and we park. We didn't ask anybody. We didn't know uh, the caretaker was around. We got out, I parked my car, we got out, we're walking, we're walking and boom, I turn and it's right there. And my friend looks at me, Tara goes, whoa, <laughs> hmm. this is crazy. It's like you got led to her. I go, yeah, that's amazing. You know, how things can happen like that. And I'm a fond believer that um, we think that people, when they go from this world, are gone. Which is true physically. But 
the essence or the energy of the person still lingers. And, and it's just that energy, you know, some people say ghost or whatever. I paid my respects there, took some pictures. And uh, at that time, uh, um, we walked around and I saw Heather York's uh, 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 from Portuguese. Her, her mm. She's encrypted there. Dean Martin, Natalie Wood. Uh, there's a, a whole bunch of other ones that are there that I didn't know at the time, but Don Knotts is there. So next time I go out there, I would like to visit him as well. And so then that kind of really, I mean, at that time, I didn't know I wanted to get into making film, right? I was just, I had all these images in my head and I never wrote a script before, you know, none of that. So when I wrote the script, it was all freelance at the beginning for Door 32. Mm -hmm. It was just, I mean, I can just say that it happened and it was God given that it happened, you know, and it led us into bumping into, into each other, you know? Which uh, this relationship that we built now, uh, Nestor, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's a precious, uh, uh, it's a gift to have, <laughs> you know, and the work we're going to be doing. But, uh, and Nestor knows sometimes I kind of, because <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know if that's the PTSD, but I've always had a hard time focusing on just one thing I'm talking about. I'll kind of move into other areas like, you know, like you're dodging, like left and right, you know. We'll we'll say it's a feature of being a creative. <laughs> <laughs> probably so, probably so. But uh, a lot of things happened to me when I was a kid, and that kind of also got me to have a really big imagination. And you know, in film, you're lucky if you have a big imagination. If you're a visionary, if uh, you could think out of the box. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people they go to take classes for film. And then they have a hard time. They don't have that imagination. You know, you look at some of the wonderful people in the past, Robin Williams, you know, Robin Williams, right? I mean, he was gifted and he had an imagination that was beyond anybody could ever even think of, you know? And uh, because he was an out of the box thinker. He thought of the most craziest, weirdest things and didn't care if people highly criticized him for it or something, you know? So, yeah, like when I was a kid, the very first thing that happened to me, I think I told Irving about this. It was a paranormal uh, uh, event that I that I experienced, uh, the very first one. So I was about 12 years old uh, and I saw what I know was a demonic figure. And uh, and it never left me. I mean, it always been there in my mind. I mean, I got more less spooked about it now than i used to be maybe 10 20 years ago it would still bug me i would feel like i was cursed because of it you know <laughs> you know like there was a shadow following me around for you know whatever but uh it was just very interesting thing to 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 see as a kid and not everybody i guess has that third eye you know they say people are just gifted when they're born and some people can just uh be clairvoyant and 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 see other things or hear other things. And uh, when I was a lot younger, that's that was the case. And I remember I, a lot of times I would feel like I got pushed off the bed and I would crawl out of my room and jump into my parents' room and they can't remember any of it when I bring it up to this day. They can't remember it. I, and so it's just, it's really interesting that that uh, happened to me when I was a kid. And if that opened up my mind, and uh, maybe I could, I could in some way be thankful for it, <laughs> you know, now, right? You know, the most scariest film I saw when I was a kid was Exorcist. <laughs> and so when I was about 11 years old, my cousin, who was my older cousin, like a bigger, bigger brother, made me watch that film. And I had no right to watch that film as an 11 year old kid. And it scared me so bad, man. I, to this day, I cannot watch that film. I just cannot. I have a buddy that could watch that. And every Halloween, and I expect him to do it, plays a prank on me. He's going to send me a text <laughs> with, with that video. <laughs> he does it to me every year. So, you know, we all have one of those, right? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you would say that it affects like the kinds of films you want to make, right? Like you, well, I mean, we were the, the one we're working on right now is somewhat of a horror film, right? I haven't seen the script yet, but, uh, yeah, it, it's somewhat of a yeah. horror film. 
it was definitely accidental as well. And mm-hmm. you know, it's really funny because I thought about it. When I wrote Door 32, I was one of those kind of artists or one of those kind of first timers that thought, is this going to be the only one? Yeah, it's always you know? how it feels like. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 was it just like that one shot deal that I got lucky that it came to me and I, and I just put it together. And that was before I, I had that sequence, uh, 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 thought of, uh, about, uh, the door 32, uh, sequence, right. Uh, which kind of also had, it, had it, had it happened in a very odd event, right. Cause I had mm-hmm. a really bad flu and this is before COVID. And I had a really, really, this is really, really before uh, uh, 2020, early before that, it was like October of 2019. I got a really bad uh, virus and it was just like, I went like to 107 uh, degree uh, temperature. But it's so weird that I was sleeping on the couch and I had that dream and, and I wrote a little bit of a uh, cabin uh, uh, in the woods, uh, which was supposed to be the sequence to uh, Door 32. But so when I wrote Door 32, I didn't think I was going to, you know, nevertheless, I never thought even uh, of uh, stepping into film industry. Right. So it just happened and it, it all kind of came together. But uh, now, uh, as far as uh, when 2020 happened, we had to push Door 32, you know, further out. And then 2021 came. We thought we were going to start working on it earlier. And then Delta came up and we still pushed that aside. So then about, about what, about two months ago is when um, the hooded man came to me. Mm-hmm. Not physically, <laughs> but, but uh, um, it was just really weird because it happened to me where I was at work and I was inside this empty warehouse and I just had the idea of the film. And I never thought about doing a horror film. Uh, I really didn't know where to place myself uh, as far as the documentary kind of non-fictional Door 32 film. You know, I never knew where to kind of place my footsteps, you know, next. Whether I was going to be doing uh, all documentary films in my in my career or am I going to do you know, action films or am I going to do comedy? You know, I didn't really know where to place myself. It's weird to say that I feel comfortable with uh, the horror uh, now. I never was, like I said, big on um, horror film. Um, Exorcist scared me so badly. I never liked watching scary movies. My my scary movies growing up was more funny than than scary. It was like Nightmare on Elm Street, right? You know, mm. Freddy Krueger, right? I mean, he's really kind of really a funny character more than you know than anything. Um, we talk like about a, it. A fun know? slasher, the slashers, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the sequential uh, films that they kept creating uh, of that character, you know, um, you know, kind of also is it's very different than Halloween, right? I mean, with Michael Myers, he's more scary in a way where he's just kind of stalking his victims and killing them one by one, right? And it's like it's just more of a more of a uh, serial killer than anything, right? You know, if you really think about it, you know, mm-hmm. and so then, um, so when this hooded man came up it was really 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 amazing when it happened because you know what i was i mean it depends now we talk about marijuana right and marijuana how it's uh um, it's good and bad and now that it's uh uh, legalized right i never Mm -hmm. thought i would say this ever i never thought i would say this uh because i was a big time smoker and I'm a, I'm actually addiction free from other things for a long time. Uh, good to say, you know, it took a long time, but I've been clean from everything for so long. And I think I, I've been pre- being prepared, been prepared by somebody, you know, up up in the, you know, in the higher realm to get to where I'm at. Right? I'm a survivor. Right? I mean, like, I could have been gone a long time ago with the things in the life I was living. Right? And so. Um, so then with this marijuana thing, as of recent, I've been clean a uh, month and week now. And the weird thing is I tried to uh, uh, quit smoking uh, marijuana, not because I felt like it was an addiction. I never thought it was an addiction. I liked it. I enjoyed doing it. You know, I can't lie because it helped me with my PTSD and all that stuff. You know how it's legalized now, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, it was getting to me. You know, and I knew Irving kind of didn't say it because Irving is like a kind of a real gentle giant. 
kind of a character, you know, <laughs> the soft voice, you know, <laughs> you know, and then at the earlier on stages, you know, we'd go and have these meetings and I'll be high or something and we won't get a lot of production uh, put into it, you know, we won't be productive, you know, and I wanted to, I wanted, it was kind of making me feel guilty. Like I, I want to focus on this career and I have something great. I can't just continue to just, you know, smoke and smoke. Because what happened was it was becoming where it was a daily thing. It wasn't like I was smoking to just relax anymore. On my days off, 24 hours, I would smoke. And and it just, I didn't realize that I had a, a bad habit. You know, it's like smoking cigarettes, you know. So once it started to get into my mind as to, hey, I need to challenge this, right? Or it's going to really do something where I'm not going to be able to focus and I'm going to lose everything that I have that I don't want to lose, right? Including people around me, you know? So weirdly, I came across this um, EVP energy reader. Uh, he's on He's on uh, YouTube and I'll send you that link so you can take a look at it. There's a lot of people that are starting to do this kind of stuff but uh, and it's so weird that it just started happening on youtube but uh, i found uh craig uh, and he, it's really funny because he was in a movie called uh what was the name of the film um I'll, I'll think about it after it's a really weird name of a film something tomatoes i don't know uh, is it a documentary know. or uh, or a fictional film yeah it was some movie that he was in i never heard of the guy he's a uh Australian actor, but it's funny because he doesn't have an accent when I when I always watch his videos and I didn't think he was uh, Australian uh, Australian at all. And so uh, anyway, so I emailed the guy randomly because I was always interested in the paranormal activity right in the back of my mind because I wanted to know what I saw when I was a kid. You know, I've been to everybody and asked them a question and nobody could tell me what it was. And I'm like, well, it can't be a dream because I still remember it as an adult that vividly, right? It just can't be a dream. I mean, dreams are something as a kid, you can't remember that vividly, you know, a lot of times. I think this was such a scary event that it, it stuck with me. So I hit him up. I said, hey, man, you know, I'm interested in uh, one of your sessions. So he tried hypnotherapy on me. Hypnosis. The last day I smoked was on 9-11. And I happened to go to my, my niece's uh, birthday party afterwards and just really got really drunk, man. <laughs> really messed up. It was a combination of earlier smoking and drinking, all that other stuff. I didn't like the way I felt. I didn't like the way I felt afterwards when I got home and the headache and all that stuff. So I hit him up and uh, he did hypnosis on me. Uh, I believe it was uh, on the 13th of. Um, September and not a craving since. I don't know how he did it. I can't explain it to you. I can't explain how hypnosis works. That was the first time I ever went under hypnosis. It wasn't a scary event as far as like, you know, oh, like, did I die and come back? You know, <laughs> you know, it was just like us talking. It was through Zoom. And it was just like he snapped his finger, man. And I don't know, man, if I, I remember waking up and my neck and shoulders were hurting. So I must have been like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and I have a pretty bad uh, neck issue, you know. So he woke me up and uh, I couldn't remember really as to like all the things that we talked about or he never really went over a lot of it. But the next day, not a single craving from the next day until now. From going from that, and it's a true story, man. It's a true story, 110%. Yeah. And uh, now that you're uh, good and stuff, uh, yeah, what, what is what is your – well, actually, I guess I have two questions. What do you look forward to the most in terms of, uh, you know, going forward? Like, what are you looking forward to the most? Maybe uh, even describe what Door 32 is, like, more in detail and, and uh, maybe uh, the hooded man as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure you 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 look forward to like getting to move on all these things. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is awesome, man, that we get to finally uh, talk about this, and it's in the universe now, right? I mean, it's more than just 
the vision that I had before it was on paper, before it, you know, you did the storyboard, you know, right? And here mm-hmm. we are, like, talking about this for the first time. So it's inspired by, yeah, you're right, inspired by uh, Jim Morrison. I got the idea by, you know, when I first looked it up and I found uh, uh, information about this uh, YouTube videos that people were doing from around the world coming out here. There were big fan, fans of his and followers and um, and they just sort of like just went to this room over the last several years or decades and since he's been gone and uh, really just like imprinted their poetry all over this room. I mean, this room, it's something you got to see when you get a chance to look it up on YouTube, you'll see videos of this place. It's literally has artwork from the ceiling to everywhere. And they charge you, this, they charge you extra to stay in that room, right? <laughs> like at that you know, motel? They, charge you, they don't charge you extra. They oh. don't charge you extra, but uh, remember what happened, right? The first time I, shot out uh uh to try to <laughs> go out there and take a look at the room and stuff i, I had the right wrong idea and i kind of uh stepped on my own uh my own toe in a sense they, they right? tried to scam you yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it was really weird but but so like now and I, anyhow so i came across this video and you know these fans and then it came to an idea of like hey you know um earlier stages you know when i started thinking about the idea of a film and nobody ever uh, put a film about this room, I knew I had something. And so I uh, started writing, and when it started coming to me, I thought of like something where a Quentin Tarantino type of film, you know, where you're going back in time and you're doing a film where it's not necessarily in black and white, but it's more 70-ish, you know? Where yeah, like very Tarantino. Where like, yeah, where like the Katie Hart character, when she first pulls up, I visioned her pulling up in this Cadillac that was like, you know, kind of like just beat up looking and uh, loud. And, uh, and and when she first pulls up in the film and she parks and just her character, the way she's going to look, it's going to be awesome. People are going to get that idea of like a 70s type of film, you know, you know, with depending on the music we add in there, because I don't want to use anybody else's, you know music and especially not Jim Morrison's, right? Well, I'm going to kind of just kind of uh, put a little image out there as far as it's going to have like a 70 feel to it, a little bit of comedy to it, a lot of cigarette smoking, you know? And um, because Jim Morrison was a huge marijuana smoker and uh, he did other drugs as well, which obviously we know how his life ended. But um so again, this film is not about him, but it's you know uh, inspired uh, by inspired by him. And uh, so Katie Hart pulls up, and I thought about it when she pulls up and how she was going to look, and it just was so perfect in my head, brother. Like I wish I could draw it out, you know, you know. I wish I wish like we we had like a a a, a machine where instead of you trying to get everything from your mind to a piece of paper which sometimes you get writer's uh, 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 block, you know? Uh, it, it's like, it's like I wish there was some sort of like real scientific uh, machine where you could get it from, you know, the data from your, your, your brain and how it looks and put it on like that would be too easy, right? <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like recording your, your dream. You know, in a sense, right? And playing it back, you know? And so I pictured her pulling up, getting out of the car. The wolf, who is uh, um, supposed to be inspired by Jim Morrison. So uh, he's sitting in the hotel room and he hears her pull up. He's waiting for his audition, uh, the girl to audition for the film that he's writing. Because in a really weird way, people are going to understand later on. I don't want to give it out. So I'll stop right there. But uh, and 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 Irving, I, I want you to stop me, man. When when you think I'm giving out too much, <laughs> I, th- I think it, I think it, I think we've got the gist enough. It's it's very like the thing that I really loved about uh about it when I read it. Uh, yeah, the formatting. Uh, if you if you want to if you want uh, 
you know, your stories in a film to translate very well. This is just for people out there. Um, formatting does matter in the sense that it gives you like a common language that people can understand, like what exactly you're trying to do and say. So I remember when the first time I read it, I was like, ah, I'm not so sure. I mean, there's, I'm not sure, ex- I'm not sure exactly what's going on in your mind. But uh, when you sent it back to me uh, in in a screenplay format, uh, it made a lot more sense. And immediately, I was like, ah, I kind of like, I like the really. It's a very sweet uh, uh, short. I, I really like the sweetness of it. Put a lot of um, passion into it, uh, into building the characters. I didn't want to uh, depict uh, their characters as like the way that they've been, you know, depicted, uh, uh, you know, throughout time, you know, mm-hmm. as like drug addicts, rock and roll stars, you know, whatever. Uh, 60s wild tiles you know right there was yeah. a lot more to it so so they had a in real life you know i mean again you know it's not about them but but they had this they had like this love between each other that was that that when they died it's still i i believe they're together you know that was that was like they they were like they had they were bonded you know for life and um so yeah i mean i put a lot of that into it and then i was like you know what i felt a lot of emotion into it too because it was like i'm I'm, i know i'm inspired by you know them when i wrote this but i was like thinking before you know we release it before we start making it i would like to go out and visit where she's buried at you know jim morrison's uh living wife uh i guess they did get married but uh it wasn't like a formal marriage. And so, uh, so yeah, I mean, I want to do that before just to kind of make, uh, um, make men's to, I guess, spirit, you know, right. That hey, you know, I'm inspired by your guys' life and this would have never happened if you guys would have never existed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause you wouldn't have nothing to be inspired about. Right. Yeah. And no, so, for sure. So I want to do that. And it's really funny because I wasn't a big fan of going to any kind of cemeteries. Like most people are fear of like death and going to a cemetery. Right. You know, spooky, and you know. Right. (laughs) And so it's just really weird because then fast forwarding up until recent, about the beginning of this year, I came across a lot of vloggers that somehow are now going out to a lot of celebrity grave sites and doing vlog videos uh, on their YouTube. You know, and it's nice to see that when they're doing it and like the way I look at it, you have to do it with good taste. You have yeah. you have to do it with respect. They were once alive. These were human beings. You know, you can't just, you know, go and, and, and try to uh, uh, bad mouth the dead. Right. In a sense. Right. Or talk bad about them and create bad things about their image, you know, uh, after mm. they're gone. So, you know, that that basically, you know, um, put things into perspective for that film, you know, and and, and uh, I told Kay, the girl who's going to play Katie Hart, you know, it'd be nice for us to go out there and, and pay respects. I found out where she's buried at. Uh, and it's a small, little, tiny, little, she's, uh, what do you call it, interned into this little, tiny, I, I believe she was cremated. It's just mm. this really tiny little uh, mausoleum. It's like, wow, you know, and Mm. Jim Morrison, you know, he's buried in in Paris. So it's really hard to go out there. And people that do go out there, really, uh, you can't do a lot because uh, they have because people did a lot of vandalism out there for so long. They have this gate and everything there and you can't stay, you know, people try to stay in, stay there overnight, you know, and Mm. things like that. And, uh, you know, they kind of lose uh, a track of, of of. in their mind that yeah they were celebrities and superstars but you gotta have respect for the dead you know yeah just like you go and visit your grandfather or grandmother or somebody's grandmother you know you, you don't want family if they have family still around oh man dude this guy's like out there hanging around you know lighting candles and stuff you know trying yeah. to wake up the dead or something that's not what we're gonna do you know I think maybe, maybe, uh, sorry, my computer is, uh, my phone is still dead, so you can't see me. Um, 
I tried to load it up several times already, and then it dies every time I turn it on. <laughs> so I'll 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 come I'll come back in uh, in a moment, hopefully by uh, the next segment. But uh, yeah, no, uh, we because uh, uh, Nathan and Ben have their own segments, so uh, we're going on a little bit long. But uh, yeah, we can have you back on at any time. So uh, I'll, I have one more question for you though before we uh, move on is uh what is this is a question i ask everyone and it's kind of out of left field but uh what is your biggest hot take or like essentially what's your biggest uh you know controversial opinion about something that's happening in hollywood about films in general or or anything like that do you have any like guilty pleasure films or like you know stuff like that (laughs) i i guess uh um you know with the awards you know how uh they were saying throughout the years that uh, a lot of, uh, um, you know, how they would like give awards to more like the white group of, of actors and how a lot of uh, other ethnicities thought that they weren't getting enough, yeah. you know, recommendation, you know, uh, you know. And so, yeah, I, I think that really something that 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 is interesting to me. Coming into a uh, film and being uh, of my background and my ethnicity, you know, uh, mm-hmm. I really would like to bring people together, man. Like, you know, really just look at the art form and and celebrating the art and not uh, excluding people, you know, and pushing people out and, and, and just hiring like a certain group of people, you know. That's not I don't want to segregate anything. We can't segregate. Yeah, for we have sure. To bring everybody together. This is our art form, and we have a passion and a love for it, and a love for each other. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And yeah, there's there's uh, times uh, people they think they're doing uh, well by the industry, and then they end up segregating people instead, uh, which is the which is the sad thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, interesting how they have a lot of Korean you know, uh, 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 movies coming out, you know, and it's kind of cool to see, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, Korean, uh, uh, writers and, uh, you know, even like, uh, um, uh, Indians, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a Indian from India in me and then I was born in Fiji Island. So I was, uh, some kind of like Fijian Indian. Mm. Um, and then, uh, I also have Dutch in me and, uh, small smidget of italian somewhere that i found out <laughs> uh and uh the dutch is really funny because my grandfather was my mom's father was very light skinned and he's born in kingston town jamaica <laughs> mm. wow yeah <laughs> yeah very light skin you know i mean it was just interesting how he ended up being born in kingston town jamaica during the uh slavery times you know wow yeah and it was so funny because my mom told me he worked for this British man and he was a camera guy mm. for him. So I'm like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> okay, could I have gotten that from him? Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. And my dad, you know, they always had like a lot of photography in them. So I think I'm at the right place because of it. Yeah. And, and I have a lot to learn still. I, I don't know everything. And I'm, it's a pleasure to meet others who also uh, are in the business, in the industry, or connected somehow. And it feels great to just be here. And I'm, I'm really blessed that Irving, uh, uh, Irving uh, um, invited me. Great. Um, no, thanks for yeah. being on. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm like, dis- I've disappeared for the last <laughs> last bit of it. Okay. Now, I know I kind of like, I, I, I didn't answer all the questions, but The Hooded Man, I think you guys are going to like, because it's a horror film, a lot of action. And it's a lot about paranormal activity and a lot of things flying around. When I wrote that and I pictured that, basically I'll say it in this way. It reminded me a lot of Blair Witch, the way I'm going to film it. Mm. So yeah. I think it'll be good on budget and give me a lot more open openness to do things the way I want to do it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as uh, that project goes, we'll probably, I mean, I'll probably invite you on to talk about the Hooded Man at some point specifically, especially as we go into production or something like that. Uh, have fun talking about the production. But in the meantime, if you want to, uh, I mean, this doesn't apply to the live podcast, but if you're watching in post, then I will put some links in the description to Rob's websites and stuff like that, where you can go find him, uh, check him, check him out, uh, tell him that we sent you here at Mixed Media. It's, it's, it's been a great time. Thank you for being here. 
Awesome. Thank you guys. <laughs> yep. Take care. <laughs> yep, take care. <laughs>